Good morning, teachers, and welcome again to our annual virtual workshop. Of course, this is the medium that we'll be using to engage with you each year as we take you through the various syllabi for our subject areas. Now, we do nothing without praying. It's customary. We invite the Lord in everything that we do. May we just bow our heads just for two minutes as we invite the Lord's presence. Most righteous and eternal God, we thank you again for sparing our lives, for taking us here to another workshop. Though virtual, you are here in spirit and we welcome you. We ask, O oh Lord, that you touch our hearts and minds that whatsoever the presenter has to say today, that we will grasp it and it will better enable us as teachers, as education practitioners, as an exam body to meet the needs, the learning needs of our students. We ask that you cover our students in schools, Lord. You see so many things that are happening in the classrooms. Lord, you see the strain, the stress, the pressure of our teachers. You see the challenges that our children are facing. But we ask for your grace as we are in this to make Jamaica and by extension the world a better place, one student at a time. So Lord, we thank you and we bless your holy name and we invite you now to participate with us today in this workshop. Amen. Let us know here from Mrs. Marva Duncanson, Caribbean representative for City and Gills. Good morning, everyone. A very good morning to you. I send warm greetings to everyone tuned into this broadcast. We are so pleased to welcome you to our annual series of tutorial workshops in math and English skills and the Skills Proficiency Awards. We continue to thank the Ministry of Education and Youth, the Heart Trust NSTA, and all our stakeholders, our dedicated principals, the loyal and committed teachers, and of course the parents who believe in City and Girls and allow us the opportunity of certification to the young people of Jamaica. We appreciate so much the support and cooperation offered by the Minister of Education and her team of dedicated senior officers, the Permanent Secretary, the Chief Education Officer, Dr. Cassand Troop, and her deputies, the Regional Directors, and the teams of education officers and coaches across the length and breadth of Jamaica. The City and Hills Caribbean office here in Jamaica and the teams in London are fully committed to supporting our students so that they can achieve their full potential. And in this regard, we try to consistently provide the highest level of customer service to enable our teachers to deliver effectively so that our learners can achieve, pass their exams, and obtain certification. I think you all know our tagline. Our tagline says it all, believe you can, believe you can. We want our students to achieve. We're committed to producing successful persons who will take their place in society here in Jamaica and in the wider global scene. Now friends, the last two years of hardship Two years of hardship have shown us that our teachers are remarkably committed, talented, resourceful, imaginative, and courageous. You have navigated through unimaginable days of COVID and the resulting disruption to teaching. Who would have thought in 2020 that we would have been looking at two years of this unbelievable disruption to our lives. And many of us have lost dear ones in the process. You managed to normalize what has been an abnormal set of circumstances. You know, I'm constantly reminded that the 2022 cohort of grade 11 students were only in grade nine when the pandemic was announced in March, 2020. Yet, notwithstanding the disruption, an overall of 64% of them were able to achieve their certification goals for City and Girls. I think that's quite remarkable. I think it's absolutely well done. They are to be commended. I believe we all should be so proud, the teachers 
and students. You pulled it together somehow. So, you know, sometimes when we're in a situation, we are so overwhelmed that we can't see the big picture. But against all the odds, our educational system has stood the test, and we thank God. City and Guilds feels privileged to offer qualifications in math and English for high school students who need an option to the regional CSEC or who simply wish to have globally recognized complementary qualifications. To date, we have issued almost 170,000 certificates in math and English here in Jamaica. And these are young people who have been able to progress with their lives. Our math and English qualifications at stage three are now accepted for recruitment to the Jamaica Defence Force, Constabulary Force, the Ministry of Finance and the Public Services, and we also enjoy an MOU with the Jamaica Employers Federation. Further, we have endorsements from 72 local universities, including the University of the West Indies, the Michael University College, and the University of Technology of Jamaica, who will accept our qualifications at stage three in math and English for certain programs of undergraduate study. We here have some 300 schools under our stewardship, and we take this responsibility very seriously. The matter of terminal exams and the results are critical in terms of helping to shape the, the lives of our young people. Many of the 6,000 plus high school students who achieved our customer service qualification have been able to move on to successful careers, many in the global services sector. City and Guilds is so proud of them. We have learners here and all over the world. Our 5,000 plus certified holders of our Skills Proficiency Awards have also been able to advance their studies across the occupational pathways, or they've moved on to employment opportunities here and abroad. And we're pushing ahead. We're pushing ahead with our high order engineering program and are pleased to report that there are some Jamaican students who have been able to achieve the prestigious level three advanced diploma. These young people are on track to receive their EngTech engineering technician status post-nominal letters that will enable them to work just about anywhere in the world. So I'm gonna take a few minutes now and just go through a PowerPoint. Some of you will know about City and Guilds, but there are, I think, perhaps persons in our audience today who don't know much about City and Guilds, and I'm happy to share. So who and what are City and Guilds? We're really a group of companies the City and Guilds Group is a leader in global skills development. We work with education providers, employers, and governments in over 100 countries across the world to help people, businesses, and economies grow by shaping skills systems and supporting skills development. The group is made up of City and Guilds, that's the exam body, the Institute of Leadership and Management, ILM, Kineo, the Oxford Group, Digital Me, and Gen2. Each of our businesses have its own distinct focus. As a group, we aim to provide comprehensive assessment, training, and learning to offer people opportunities all across the world. Together, we set the standard for professional and technical education and corporate learning and development across the globe. This is our motto. The City and Guilds of London Institute is committed to developing the skills of people and organizations to secure their personal and economic growth and prosperity. See the lion? That's us. We we'll offer competence-based exams. And what is competence? It's the ability to perform a task or job successfully by using a combination of knowledge, skills, and attitude, which is measured across a standard. This ability can be acquired through experience and or training and demonstrated by qualifications. These are what I consider to be City and Guild's five key strengths, ladies and gentlemen. The fact that we offer portability or qualifications provide learners with portability 
they can move across borders and work. The fact that we have this progression approach to certification so you can start and achieve in stages. The fact that our qualifications are recognized, recognition, very important. That wherever in the world you should go, a City and Guilds certific certificate is recognizable. And of course, we are heavily aimed towards employment. So employability is a key and aspirations. Need I say more? It is so important that we help our young people to fulfill their aspirations. So we've been operating here in the region now for, I've been with City and Guilds for almost 20 years and we've been operating across the region. In November 2019, we signed a third contract with the Minister of Education and Youth. This one is a 10-year contract for the delivery of our qualifications in math and English skills, the Skills Proficiency Awards, Customer Service and Engineering. We've also engaged with the Ministries of Education in Barbados, Bermuda, the British Virgin Islands, Bahamas and the Cayman Islands, where we've been registering students for math and English exams. Now, as you probably know, we award digital badges to successful candidates for math, English, the skills proficiency and customer service. We've also been engaged by heart for the delivery of our qualifications in math and English skills to all their students enrolled across Heart Academy. And they've further engaged us for the delivery of digital badges for specific programs of studies offered by the NTA. We've been engaged by the Ministry as well for the delivery of planned National School Leaving Certificate, the NSLC, which is going to be launched in this school year. And of course, we are engaged by seven private training providers, major ones here in Jamaica, the Bahamas, Cayman Islands, and Trinidad for accrediting or assuring programs of study. I want you to just have a quick look at this. Here's a big picture. Over a 12-year period, City and Guilds has awarded 169,000 certificates to Jamaican students. And I'm going to spend just um, a minute or so on the 2022 results. So the overall percentage pass rate for math from the June 2022 exams is 64%. For English skills, 78%. And the overall, that is a national average, is 69%, which is quite remarkable considering. I want to point out too that there was a first this year in 2022 where many traditional high schools, in fact 34 of the 42 traditional high schools, registered 6,000 candidates in total for our math skills at stage three. Now you're all aware that the CSEC national performance rate was 37%. So the Ministry of Education gave the opportunity to these traditional high school students for subsidy for both CSEC and City and Guilds. I'm pleased to report that the percentage pass rate, specifically amongst that cohort, the traditional high schools, was 85%. Well done. We enjoy recognition from the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the Jamaica Defence Force, the Ministry of Finance and the Public Services, the Jamaica Employees Federation, the University Council of Jamaica and the Heart NSDA Trust. And of course, um, I shared with you earlier that we enjoy recognition from 22 local universities. I'm not going to read through all of them. They include the University of the West Indies. And our skills proficiency awards are available across 12 occupational areas. I'll just read them out for you. Carpentry, electrical installation, fabrication, welding and pipe works, food and beverage, food preparation, housekeeping, IT for office application, masonry, 
motorcycle repair, motor vehicle engineering, painting and decoration, plumbing. And you know, as our prime minister spoke recently about the shortage of skilled labor, I want to point out that um, many of our young people are pursuing six of the 12 pathways that are available in construction. Here is a performance analysis um, over four years from 2019, 20, 21 and 22. So you see the number of centers participating has been growing in the first row. The registration numbers have been moving up and I'm pleased to report that the percentage certification rate for 2022 is 56%. There are 1,894 persons who is still pending their results. Let's have a look at the customer service. I told you 6,000 Jamaican youth have been certified over the last four years and our customer service qualification sits on the UK qualification framework. It enjoys the same standing as would a GCSE subject. So it's really a much regarded qualification that can be used for employment anywhere in the world. So I'm pleased to report this to you. Now our engineering, um, we continue to push and push with the engineering. It's currently being offered at five schools. So there's York Castle High School, Jamaica College, Excelsior High School, Brownstone Community College, and the Institute of International Recognized Qualification, that's IIRQ. This is a very high level qualification. The curriculum is delivered over a two year period and the assessment is across nine exams in all, written and practical. We're looking at high order math, physics, science. So typically this program of study is most suited to students who are academically gifted. It's the level three, the level three that leads to the designation of engineering technician, ENGTEC, which facilitates post-nominal letters. And this is being offered on the new sixth form pathway program for the upcoming academic year. Of course, we've been offering digital badging or successful candidates for math and English customer service and the skilled proficiency, they will receive their paper certificates, but significantly, they'll also receive digital badges next year, as indeed they did this year. So have a look at what the digital badge looks like. There is an image on this, on this slide, a level one award in customer service. You would click on it, you'd be able to see the candidate's name. Um, you could click again and there will be metadata telling you about the course itself. Teachers, I'm stressing that it's important that students have a professional email address. There's an example, joe.brown at gmail.com. Many of them have either inappropriate email addresses, personal, or they're using the ministry's email address. And I'm advised that that has a very short lifespan. So I'm encouraging you to have your students, if they want to receive a digital badge, when they achieve success, to have a registered regular professional email address. So we have a dynamic workshop planned for you. I know you're gonna to enjoy today's activities and learn quite a bit. For those of you who registered, City on Deals will be awarding you with a digital badge, indicating your continued professional development. And it just may come in useful at some point. My team and I are committed to our organizational values of innovation, trust, engagement, and integrity. And we will continue to support the Ministry of Education and Youth, the HART, NSDA, and all our stakeholders to achieve the national objectives of Jamaica. We consider it a privilege, and we're happy for the opportunity to serve the government of Jamaica and our young people. Thank you for listening, and God bless you. Thank you so very much, Mrs. Duncanson, for that comprehensive report. We'll now hear from our Chief Education Officer, Dr. Kassan Chu. Good morning. Special morning, of course, to the leadership of City and Gills Jamaica, Mrs. Marva Duncanson, and her team members who continue to serve this country. 
special morning to our teachers. Yes, you. It's really a pleasure to have you in the midst this morning. You are our nation builders. You are our social entrepreneurs. You are our heroes with our capes. And we have just celebrated World Teachers Day. What can we really do without you? You know, the research has shown that the, teach the system cannot exceed the quality of its teachers. And the pandemic has revealed how important you are in the scheme of things. We are back in the face-to-face -face learning environment and you see the struggle of the, the, the school. You see the struggles of the classroom. You see what's happening with our boys and girls. That is evidence that they miss you. That is evidence that because of those two years, we have been set back, but I know with you, we can champion the cause of education. We can redeem this nation because you believe in what you do each day. You go to work with a passion and love for our boys and girls. And irrespective of the circumstances, I know the pay is not necessarily rewarding, but I know you continue to dig deep. You continue to give up yourself and you continue to serve this country. Teachers, ladies and gentlemen, our heroes without capes, I thank you. I thank you for what you have done throughout this period of, of a difficult experience globally. I thank you for staying in Jamaica. Many of our colleagues are gone and that, that is okay. People will always seek for better. But you remained and you are here. And I want to recognize you for that. I want to validate you for that. And I want to celebrate you and to let you know that the Ministry of Education and Youth is forever grateful for what you continue to do every day. You unearth talents. You help students to feel confident. You help them to believe in themselves. And I'm certain that when you see them out there and you see the excellence that they are reaping, you continue to share in that joy. I say this because I can relate to it. I've been a teacher for nine years before I moved into administration and into the policy division here in the Ministry of Education. And I know when I see my students out there, the joy that comes to me. In fact, just this morning, I had an experience with one of my students. I went to a health center to get a vaccine because I will go on duty travel very soon. And it is my student who recognized me in mass and said, Miss, and called my name and escorted me and helped me. And today I've been back here to bring greetings and to, room, to just recognize you for what you continue to do. That's what we do. And that's how our students make us feel. I felt very special. And I'm happy that I could have contributed to that child being the person she is today. So teachers, I know sometimes it's tough. I know sometimes you feel daunted, but I want to encourage you today. Do not give up on Jamaica. Do not give up on our boys and girls. And I know you are not giving up. That is why you have made yourselves available to be a part of this annual tutorial workshop for our teachers. Because you believe in growth. You believe in honing your own skills and building your capacity to deliver your craft. So this year again, we launch our annual assessment program for our external exams, not just for CXC, but also for City and Gills. And each year, City and Gills sees it fit to discuss with you the performance data of our students, something, of course, that we are proud of. You know, every year, our students continue to excel at the City and Gills exam, be it math, be it English language, be it customer service or even the Skills Proficiency Awards. Every single year, we send up in excess of 50,000 entries and we have our students over 60%, sometimes close to 70%, excelling at these exams. Colleagues, they can only do this because of you. And we want to validate you and recognize what you continue to do so we can reap the success that our students demonstrate in the exam. So again, we are embarking on a new sitting and in preparing you to do your best and to help the students to do their best this workshop is designed to expose you further to the content and to the administrative responsibilities and most importantly to spend some time to look at the gaps 
you know, they will be looking at the results and to look at those areas that, that we saw particular weaknesses in. We're going to bring that to the forefront. We're going to dissect that. We're going to dig deep. And we're going to examine that. And then we're going to look at how can we make sure that we don't have a repeat of that. That's what today's tutorial is all about. So colleagues, I want you to embrace this opportunity of learning. I want you to continue to appropriate whatever it is that you will leave from this workshop with to your own growth and development, to your own self of empowerment. And of course, we will see that in the results. We'll see that in how your schools continue to perform and improve. You know, education is that weapon that will change the lives and to break the cycle of poverty. Education is a weapon for development. And this is a gift that you continue to contribute to. As we, the Ministry of Education, put the resources in place, and I can say it will never be enough. Globally, it's the same cry. But, you know, one hand can clap. You will do your part. We will do our part and we pray that the parents will continue to do their part because the demands are many. It will take a tripartite approach for us to transform this country. But we continue to do it bit by bit. So City and Guilds will continue to build the capacity of our teachers to deliver. They will continue to provide affordable um, programs for our students. They continue to even expose us at, here at the Central Ministry to other programs like the entrepreneurship program um, that they, they are carrying out that we're about to look at. They are also doing the engineering program with us. That has not been doing well, but we are going to refocus as a ministry to make sure that we are creating engineers for Jamaica. We are no longer just users of research. We want to be innovators and creators and developers and manufacturers. That's what it's going to take to transform our social and economic reality. That's what the thrust is. Quality education for all, inclusion, equity, equal opportunity. And that is what it's going to take to build Jamaica and to make it a place for us to live, for us to raise our families, for us to work and do business. That's the partnership you're in, colleagues. Let me again welcome you to this opportunity of empowerment and let me thank you for all that you will continue to, to do post this experience and as you interact with your boys and girls in our own schools. God bless you and thank you. And again, keep giving your best. We are relying on you. Thank you. You've heard from our Chief Education Officer, Dr. Kassan Chu. Let us now hear a message of endorsement from a few of our principals. Good day, everyone. I am Aniona Jones, principal of the Marcus Garvey Technical High School located in St. Anne, Jamaica. We are the only technical high school in St. Anne, and we are committed to having all of our students certified in their various skill areas. Given the fact that our students come to us with a range of abilities, from highly proficient to functioning as many as six grade levels below where they need to be when they enter in grade seven, our institution has had to search high and low to find alternative forms of certification for our students. We are very pleased with the support that we have been getting from the City and Guilds team here in Jamaica in ensuring that our students are certified, whether at entry level skills proficiency or they are certified in the post secondary units. The City and Guilds exams are internationally recognized, and our students have been able to travel the globe with their City and Guilds certification. We are very pleased with the fact that our students get an opportunity to be certified from as early as grade nine or 10 or 11, and that they are able to matriculate into our local NCT VET examinations. We recommend the City and Guilds program for all learners, whether you are highly proficient and you want to pursue certificate or diploma certification, or you are a struggling reader and you need a bit more scaffolding. The City and Guilds exams, internationally recognized, very easy to follow curriculum, local assistance in getting your program started, as well as recognition for what the children are able to do. We have found it very easy to transition into 
all of these areas. And we recommend that you try the City and Gills certification exams. Jamaican students in general, and I think Jamaica as a whole, did not ascribe much credibility to City and Gills in its initial stage. But I think over the dec last decade or so, we have seen where the confidence and the belief and acceptance in city and viewers that have grown and persons now understand that they can benefit from this, not only locally, but more so internationally. At the known, we have carefully packaged the benefits of the of city and viewers. And we have observed an increase in the interest and registration of students, especially in math and English and customer service, as well as the skilled areas. Now, many students have benefit, benefited in gaining acceptance to pursue tertiary studies, to gain employment, and some even to take it overseas. And that is one of the push here at the that some of the students, they intend to travel and work abroad. And so they want to do city and bills. We have seen where their confidence and the morale have both improved and increased over the few years. Now, there was a student, and I must share this story. There was a student who did a number of CAC subjects and won city and bills. When the results came, he failed the city, failed the CSEC subject and passed the city and bills. To our dismay, he was quite delighted and happy that he passed because, as he said, it was the first time in his immediate family that one person passed an external exam. What it does, it inspires and motivates and instills confidence and that I can do it attitude. Now, here it was the head of language department share with me. She said, from my perspective, City and Deals have provided more manageable options to students. And I have seen where their oral presentation skills have developed, especially those doing stage three. We have seen where the students who have to do individual presentation have grown in confidence. She went on further to say that the students have gained confidence and recognized the journalism and public speaking skills. So previously, any such formal presentation, whether for their class or for their clubs and society, they would have shied away because they lacked confidence. But after receiving guidance and the opportunity to practice, they have blossomed. City and Gilsey Airport, to, to the noon, is not only an alternative in case you feel CSEC. It is a viable, portable, and marketable option that helps students on the pathway to success. So, give it a try. What do you mean? It is now time for us to prepare for today's presentation. We'll be hearing from two presenters. For English, we'll be hearing from Ms. Sylvia Bryan, who is our lead external quality assurer and subject specialist for 3850. Ms. Bryan has been working with us for several years and this year will be her last presentation. We will miss her, we honor her, and we thank her for her service. Our second presenter will be Ms. Natisha Lindsay. She's a classroom teacher of English and also an external verifier of English. Please stay focused Make your notes, and of course, we welcome questions as they present today on City and Bill's English 3850 qualification. Good morning, colleagues, and welcome to our 2022-2023 English Skills 3850 annual workshop. First of all, we want to make you aware of the seminar objectives so that your expectations will be high. First, we want to familiarize all the participants with the syllabus and the format of assessments for the reading and writing and speaking and listening certificates. 
we will also address some of the weaknesses identified in the Chief Examiner's Report on the 2022 Reading and Writing Examination. We will have voices from the field where assessors will be sharing their approaches to specific reading and writing tasks and the discussion task. We will also share strategies for effective delivery of both certificates in the qualification and explain the quality assurance process for the speaking and listening certificate. Ms. Lindsay will now lead you through the value of the City and Guilds in the skills 3050 and the overall syllabus for the reading and writing and speaking and listening certificates. You may wonder why City and Guilds is important. City and Guilds is a cohesive examination that is thematic, it is culturally relevant, and there is a stage approach which engages the language art skills and the cognitive levels of learners. It is designed to empower the teacher and the student through guidance with notes on each unit that will assist in lesson planning, plus there are specimen papers and answers to give you a greater insight into the exam and expected responses. There's a diagnostic test that is available to assist the teacher in selecting the appropriate stage for which the student will sit the exam. This thematic approach also allows teacher and student to know in advance the area of concentration and facilitates research. There is a word list which allows and encourage vocabulary development and enrichment. There are three stages to the exam, stage one, stage two, and stage three. All stages have a reading and writing component, which is externally set and marked by the London office. The speaking and listening component is internally assessed by the teachers or assessors at the various schools. There is a integrated and thematic assessment covering reading and writing, which includes detailed reading and extended writing. For the 2020-23 exam year, the exam topic will be provided by the London office in short order. The listening and speaking exam includes listening and speaking tasks, group discussions, presentation, reflection and evaluation at different levels. So what does the English skill exam contain? As stated before, there are three stages. The exam is for two hours and in stage two and three, there are two sections for reading and writing. The content covers six units and for each stage, the word limit is different. So for stage one, the word limit is 75 to 100 words. Stage two, 200 to 300 words. And stage three, 300 to 400 words for the extended writing piece. What is good about this exam is that students are allowed and encouraged to take their dictionary or thesaurus to the exam room. So the stage one, comprehension passage and related tasks ask students for author's purpose. They question students about organizational features, form filling, the use of image to extract meaning, dictionary use, vocabulary, capitalization, punctuation, other grammatical full stops, question marks, exclamation, as well as spelling and grammar. For the continuous or extended piece, we have letters, reports, and articles. In stage two, also important to the comprehension is the identification of various types of information pieces 
the use and function of images, their summarizing skills, organizational features, persuasive devices, vocabulary expansion, capitalization, punctuation, and other grammar components. They too are expected to write letters, articles for the newspaper or magazine. Say three, however, ask for a more comprehensive task, and this would include the author's purpose, biases, facts, and opinion, summer skills, organizational features, extracting meaning from a wide range of texts, the function of images, and vocabulary such as synonyms, root words, affixes, as well as grammatical structures, capitalization, punctuation, spelling, etc. Their extended writing also includes letters and articles, but for stage three, they are particularly expected to know how to do or follow multi-step instructions as well as write speeches. The assessment grading for the exam, 50 to 64 candidates are awarded a pass. 65 to 84% they are awarded merit. And the distinction ranges from 85 to 100%. Ms. Brian now will take us through the speaking and listening certificate. For the speaking and listening certificate, each stage does a listening comprehension. For stages one and two, the comprehension type question is recalled, so they know that they can find the answers in the text. And when the assessors are preparing students, they should integrate the speaking and listening comprehension with the reading and writing so that students learn how to find different types of the answers to different types of questions. You will see that there are five marks and these are for four recall type questions for stage one. For stage two, there are similarly recall type questions, but one of them is a multiple choice question. Notice that the types of questions are linked to a particular unit in the student's syllabus, that is the handbook, which contains the units which should be covered by all students in preparation for the exam. So we go to stage three, and we will notice that it is more challenging. There are six questions. These are aligned to unit 405, and these are worth eight marks. You notice that there is a similar category of independent recall. There is one chosen from multiple choice, and then there are the evaluative free response questions. I want to say a little more about these. These are based on the assessment criterion, testing the ability to make requests and ask questions appropriate to the topic. So those two questions, they need the student to answer a question, ask a question about the topic that was covered and then to make a suggestion about another related aspect of the topic which was covered. So those two, you will not find the answers in the text. You will have to make conclusions based on your experience and what is in the text. Now, the next task which all stages have to do is a discussion and we will look at the criteria, the assessment criteria for the discussion. Stages one and two have similar assessment criteria, so we look at those together. They are given a specific topic. Each stage has this topic given at least a month before the exam, so they can do the research 
which will enable them to provide relevant information. They are required to listen and respond appropriately to statements and questions of their peers. This is how their listening skills are going to be developed. If they just simply come to say something to get a mark without relating it to what their peers said before, then they would not be displaying good listening skills. They may request or ask questions to gain additional information, so they should not be asking rhetorical questions in their discussion. Now, when we talk about relevant information, we are talking about information which is relevant to both the topic and to what their peers have said using strategies to clarify or confirm understanding. The speaker needs to communicate effectively by speaking in such a way that the listener can understand what has been said. What are some of the strategies that can be used to clarify? They can give examples or express what they have said in another way. They can use comparison or contrast to make something clearer. For example, if they wanted to clarify the difference between the problems which you have with rural transportation in a rural area as opposed to transportation in the urban area. So they need to make sure that their listeners understand. Respecting the turn-taking rights of your peers and using phrases for interruption, those are allied. So they don't just break into what the other person was saying. They respect the right of that person to speak and so they will use introductory phrases, may I interrupt, may I suggest. So that is indicating to their peer that they are about to say something. Now, stage two has an additional assessment criterion, presents ideas and organizes information in sequence and develops the main point. So the student cannot just make a statement and leave it. The student needs to support it. That is how the point development comes in and the organization of the information in sequence. You notice that the um, stage two has more marks allocated for the discussion because more is required. We look at stage three. You will notice that stage three does not have as many marks as stage four. Two, that is because stage three will also be doing a presentation which carries the most marks and so we need to focus on that. Several significant contributions. It means that the candidate cannot simply rep repeat what went before or cannot just make a point which does not lead the discussion forward. So that is how the point is going to be regarded as significant. It contributes to moving the discussion forward. Adapts contributions to suit audience, purpose, and situation. Again, listening so that what you have to say is relevant and you are going to be using examples and language which is suitable for your audience. Uses evidence to support opinions and arguments. You would have got this evidence from the time when you did your research. And so you would be using it to develop your points. Again, we come to phrases for interruption and also for change of topic. So may I suggest that we look at it in this way. May I suggest another approach? Uses strategies to reassure. This is the listener. And this can be verbal or nonverbal communication. So you can smile and nod. You can give an uh, give a high five, you can say, yes, I agree with you because so and so. So um, that is a very important part of the listening. You cannot have strategies to reassure if you have not listened and if you are not showing an interest in what your peer is saying. Now, this is where, as I said before, there is a difference between the stages because stage three does an individual presentation to speak confidently in a way that suits the situation throughout the presentation. And we would be looking at indications of confident speaking. We would be looking at posture, body language, eye contact, 
and so on for speaking confidently. Response confidently to questions. The presenter will be questioned by a particular listener and the presenter needs to respond confidently. Demonstrates organization and sequencing of information and ideas. So the presenter must know where he, she wants to start and how he, she is going to develop the ideas to move towards a conclusion, to move towards giving effective uh, instructions at the end, gives an effective explanation or account. This is related to responding to the question. So when the presenters ask questions, the presenter should give an effective explanation. And this should also be included in the general presentation. Gives multi-step instructions that can be followed. The last year's presentation actually had a demonstration lesson on this. But basically, multi-steps would involve at least three or more steps for carrying out a related activity. So if you ask me about how to write your essay, I might suggest that you would first do some research, you would look at the bullet points provided, you would um, arrange your ideas to support each bullet point in the given box, you would then expand your paragraphs on each bullet point. Whatever it is that you are speaking about, you would be, have to give some instructions which are clear and which can be followed. Response to criticism, you should be able to accept what your peer has said about how you could improve your presentation and you should be able to tell your peer how he or she could improve his or her presentation. Now, what we have here is a flowchart which simply shows you how the, the process that you are going to take the student to through in preparation for the exam and at the exam. So you tell the student about the task, you tell the student about the rubrics, that is what are the points for which he or she is going to be marked. Then you would play or read the material three consecutive times. Students will write the answers to the already provided questions. For activity two, the group discussion, there is a planning time of up to 30 minutes. Why do you need the planning time? For the exam in particular, they are going to be placed in their groups on the day of the exam. And so they would need to get together to develop some group synergy to determine who is going to be the group leader and who is going to be that person to draw the others in when they are not um, participating and so on. So, and then for the discussion, they have from five to 10 minutes, they have to answer some reflection questions on their discussion, so they write those answers, and they will hand everything to their assessors who will grade them, and then this has to be given to the internal verifier who will look at what has been done and verify whether he, she agrees with the marks which have been given. As pointed out before, stage three has this additional task, it's a similar situation. They need to be told what they are going to be marked for. They are going to be researching their topic. They are going to be placed in groups of three to five. Three to five. Do not increase the group size because you have a large class. Okay, for the activities, so the individual presentation we have mentioned, it lasts for three to four minutes. And then the peer will complete a peer evaluation form. We have mentioned the listening comprehension that they would um, play that for them or read it for them three times. And we have looked at the assessment criteria for that and the discussion, the planning time, we mentioned that before. And they all complete an assessment record and the internal verifies to check this and sign off on it. You will notice that there are different marks for pass, merit, and distinction for each of the stages. This is because the marks are different. The tasks are assigned different marks. And so I think that explains itself. What is a pass for stage one, for stage two, stage three, what's for a merit, and what is a distinction. 
um, what material can the assessor use to guide him or her in carrying out the assessment and in assigning marks. The frequently asked questions document helps with information. And in each examination package, there's a marking guide. And on page three, it tells you how to conduct the exam. And of course, there's a qualification handbook, which has in the units for each stage, the syllabus, which you need to cover. And so those are the materials that would assist you in preparing the students. We will now be helped by a group of teachers from Enid Bennett High School. I want to express my deep gratitude to them for making this very valuable contribution to our workshop. And so we listen to their discussion as they share with us their approach to preparing their students to execute the discussion task in the exam. Hello colleagues, how are you today? All right, so today we'll be having a conversation about the speaking and listening aspect of TPL Games where we will be focusing on the discussion. I am Kadian Johnson. I am Elita Rowley. And tonight, Shaw Williams. I'm Veronica Henry Morgan. <laughs> All right. So we'll start off with Mrs. Henry Morgan. All right. Um, every year, we are charged with the responsibility of preparing our children to the way the discussion has the previous students exam. And I know that all of us want the students, first of all, to relax. Right. Um, to recognize that this question is not something new to them. They do it every day. But when we prepare them for the exam, when they sit before us, they are ever so conscious that this is an exam that sometimes, you know, it doesn't feel natural to them. So one of the first things that we need to do to prepare them is to try to get them to relax and to feel natural when they are talking. Usually it's a topic that they know something about or they are given the opportunity to research. So they can come with the knowledge and then they have the confidence that I can do this because I can talk and talking is what we require them to do. So one of the things that I do is from time to time I have little discussions in my class. So and usually what children really love to talk. Right. I don't know if you find it. Yes. I love to talk. They can you say it's not to talk to them. Right. right. So find a time when they want to talk and find a topic that they are interested in. Something for the teenagers. Something they can basically read. Yes, yes. As so we have full class discussion and everybody gets an opportunity to talk. So when they come to do the exam now, they already know that this is what you do, you know that what you were doing in class yesterday, that's the same to the same thing you want to do. Right? So that's one of the strategies. I know that you have your other strategies. All right, so for my class, we prepare my students for the discussion portion of the exam. I usually get them familiar with the word list that we're given. So just like this, we have a discussion, but we ensure that they are using up the word list, using up the vocabulary, so that on exam day, they can feel comfortable tossing a word here or a word there, and they are not stuttering or fumbling and adding to their nervousness because we all know that they are nervous on that day. So we try to get them comfortable using up the vocabulary. And we can also encourage them that to, to allow them to know that being nervous is natural, right. but it is important that you add something to the contribution, say something, give your your remember that they get time to to prepare for the topic. So whatever you have researched, you have to contribute. And as also, for example, if you see one of your team members, for example, they don't have much to say, you can also encourage them to ask me a question. You need to think you have anything to add. Or you need to think what you think about what I have to say. So you know you help each other to ensure that the team as a team, each person is able to score some marks for the for their contribution to the social media. Exactly. In addition to that too, sometimes the students are so caught up with getting out the content of the, the uh, what they have researched that they forget the basics of public speaking. So, for example, 
maintain eye contact. Things like that, those are very important. So I try to help them when we have our little class discussions to remember to look at the glance at the persons you're speaking to. Don't bury yourself in your notes if you don't have some notes. Be natural as much as possible. Use meaningful gestures. Even that section that talks about nonverbal communication, sometimes it forget about that part. Um, so facial expression is important. Um, using the hands meaningfully, you know. Yes, um, I agree with that. Right. So and not the head too, just say right. you're in agreement. Exactly. So um, in, in helping the students to carry on what they're doing in the discussion, I always remind them of that aspect of it, the, of the whole matter of the gestures and facial expressions, the non-verbal communication is also important. What I find too um, is that a lot of times the students, when they do their research, right, they come with their questions already that they want to ask, or the points that they want to make, they know what they want to contribute to the discussion. But sometimes the discussion starts and it doesn't follow in the way that they wanted or anticipated. So sometimes they go ahead and they make their contribution anyway, and perhaps at a point where the contribution or the question that they're asking is not a natural flow in the progression of the discussion. So we want, when we're having our class discussions, to be able to help the children to be open to what is being said or asked at the point so that they respond directly to what is said or asked rather than just insert a point someplace because they had already prepared that, that point to, 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 to contribute. So helping them to understand um, where and when to inject whatever point of question is important. So yes. we are saying basically that to add to what you have to say, they have to ask relevant questions. Mm -hmm. Don't just ask the questions because that, that are you prepared or what that those are the questions that you have to ask. But they must be relevant based on what the team members have to say. And also to add, um, we know our students, so even though close the discussion, to lead the discussion basically so that it flows. So the person say, all right, good morning, I am Katie and Johnson, and today we'll be discussing and detail the topic, and then that same person will close it. So select somebody who we know, they're the strong student, the strongest, the strongest student then of the lot, to this to open and close the discussion. That makes sense because then things will flow naturally and then you have yes. the awkward silence. Yes. Right. So the students know what they're doing, that team leader will know that I will begin and I will wrap up so to speak. So we need to make sure that we do that. That is a good suggestion. And did you notice that or have you noticed that most times the section where where our students fall down on is the part about uh using phrases for interruption? Yes. Yes. So we have to try to see how best, even though most of us do it in class, yes. try to encourage them or remind them that you have to use phrases to interrupt at the appropriate time. Because even though you want to interrupt and add your piece, you have to be mindful of others. And you have to, and you are marked for respecting the tertiary right. rights right. of right. others. Right. So we have to encourage them as well to interrupt in a way that is. Uh, Right. 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 Sometimes I say to the students, um, somebody says something and you don't agree, will you jump up and say, I'm foolish to see a talk. <laughs> no, you don't do that. So you may say, I understand what you are saying, I understand why you make that uh, comment or why you have that opinion. However, I have an alternate um, idea or so on. And then you put your views, right? So you don't necessarily have to agree, but you have to be respectful in how you share. And also, um, it is good for us to share the program with our students so that they know exactly what they are marked for. So when they know exactly what to do, then on the day of the exam, although they may be a bit nervous, the conversation will flow and they will be better prepared for the exam. Right, and while in class as well, give some feedback to know their strengths and their weaknesses and how they work on. So you know, give them a strength to say, all right, in the other discussion, they say yes, I'm ready because it's the period for the exam and stuff like that. All right.
lines. So basically, yes, and it's good. All right, so that is basically how we prepare our students for the exam at the Uni Bennett High School. So thank you so much, guys, for the conversation. It was really, really wonderful. It was a stranger welcome. Thank you so very much for sticking and staying with us throughout the presentation. Now, you're at liberty to take a break. We don't want you to be fatigued, all right? So we're going to be sharing the link to our survey as we want to hear from you what your experience was as we want to improve your experience each year. So look out for that in the chat and feel free to ask any questions as our presenter is available to answer them. Let me start that one yeah. Like oh Martin Luther King would have started. My dream, my dream, my dream, my dream, my dream. Tell you my dream is to live my dream. Yeah, the most I in a me sleep and me sleep. Tell you my goal, my goal, my goal. All of my goal is to reach my goal. Live a happy life, put it on me headstone. Nobody no fi cry over me dead. Look at me now, when them treat me less than gold Put me in a box like a rectangle, oh oh Look at me now, oh, look at me now, oh Look at me now, I me just tell you my life Where them used to go round me, go round No one used to come round me, my life was so lonely Look at me now, look at me now, look at me now I take plain like J-U-T-C When you see me, it's on TV Shows after shows after shows after shows Tours after tours after tours after tours When me name call is like rules after rules Sweet melody and chords after chords Them lock a one door, me bust doors after doors after doors after doors after doors after doors Look at me now, where them treat me less than gold Put me in a box like a rectangle, oh oh Look at me now, oh, look at me now, oh Look at me now, I me just tell you my life Where them used to go round me, go round No one used to come round me, my life was so lonely Look at me now, look at me now, look at me now The blessing does a flow over, this a copia, and a copa Such a soldier, from board house to sidewalk to lift a sofa Them say me living at the coast of no track, no sir Me no mix up in a coca, marijuana no dust to the nausea I no powder, not a obia, can't get over. Look at me now, where them treat me less than gold. Put me in a box like a rectangle. Oh oh, look at me now, oh, look at me now, oh, look at me now. I me just tell you my life, where them used to go round me, go round. No one used to come round me, my life was so lonely. Look at me now, look at me now, look at me now. Thank God for me blessing No me can afford to give back to some of the same people Them we used to set things I do used to set him Now nah, boss him, can't boss them See him when I take boss Come on, stay to be call up them But me still a call up them Boss them but me can't trust them See them but me not touch No hate them but me can't love them From trench down Our next star rise again Look at me now Where them treat me less than God Put me in a box like a rectangle Oh oh Look at me now oh Look at me now oh Look at me now, I me just tell you my life Where them used to go round me, go round No one used to come round me, my life was so lonely Look at me now, look at me now, look at me now Look at me now, where them treat me less than gold Put me in a box like a rectangle, oh oh Look at me now, oh, look at me now, oh Look at me now, I me just tell you my life Where them used to go round me, go round No one used to come round like the caterpillar that becomes a butterfly, you too were born to fly. I was born with everything I need to be me. With wings inside my mind to set me free. I know I've got vision more than my eyes can see. And I know I rule my destiny So no matter how hard you try No, you can never change my mind I know if caterpillars can fly So can I So can I So can I, so can I. I know if caterpillars 
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold I believe when your day's down here through There's a place up there for people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you Streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your day's down here or through There's a place Up there For people like you
get there, there's a hand to hold. I believe when your day is down here all through you, there's a place up there for people like you. There's a place up there for people like you. Look at text features and how it aids in comprehension. There are several functions for text features. One, they enhance readability. Two, they help students to identify main ideas. Three, they help to summarize main ideas, explain ideas, reinforce ideas, and also generate interest in the reader. Good day, everyone. How are you? I hope good. So, what will we be looking at today? Today, we will be looking at text features. Very important, especially for those of us who will be sitting the City and Gales English exams. Now, there are different definitions, but for today, we will only be looking at two definitions. Here is one. A text feature may be defined as different ways in which a writer arranges or organizes a text so that it engages the reader. Another definition is the important elements of texts that give a sense of structure and that helps readers to locate information rather quickly. So, where can these? things be found, these text features. Or oh, they can be found everywhere. In fact, we use them every day. We see them every day without even realizing that they are there. We see them in our indices, prefaces, appendices, footnotes, or tables of contents, titles, illustrations, diagrams, labels, captions, or bulleted lists, or page numbers, photographs, captions, glossary, indexed. In fact, the list is inexhaustible. So, what purpose do these text features serve? They help us know what is important in a text and help us to locate this or these information, this information, very quickly. For example, if you look at a title in the table of content, you can decide that, okay, I need to look at this particular title, I need to look at this particular section of the, the book, because this is where I need my information. This is where the information will be coming from. From the byline, what is a byline? That is a line at the head of a newspaper or magazine article that carries a writer's name. We can learn about the article, who wrote this article, and from that we can give credit to the author and to the information. We can decide that this is valid or reliable. Advertisers use text features in so many different ways illustrations, colors, bold letters. As I said, the list is inexhaustible. Let's look at some examples. We make ordering easy. If you realize, those words actually jump out at us. They are big, they are bold. Look at this other one. Toledo for 19. What is it saying? It forces us to look. It grabs our attention. It's there for a reason. Let's look at this little one. The Ninja Bread Man. Very colorful. 
That's also a text feature. The color, the illustrations. Look at this other one. Features and benefits. If you realize the two words, features, benefits, they are larger. And what do they do? They grab the viewer's attention. And of course, it is for a reason. No. What are some others that you have seen being used? I'm going to give you one minute and you know these in your textbook. All right, very good. Yes, that bold lettering that you have seen at the, yes, very good, very good, in your newspaper. Your textbook, mm -hmm. those colors, those illustrations, they all serve their various purpose or purposes. So how does text feature aid in comprehension? We will look specifically at bold words, bulleted lists, headings, and subheadings. For the purpose of the exam, the text features include all the components of an article that are not the main body of the text. So as said, these include headings, subheadings, bold, print, sidebars, pictures, captions, diagrams, and bulleted or numbered lists. Some of these which occur in past papers are headings and subheadings, bold, pictures or illustrations, bulleted or numbered lists. An approach to the teaching of text features. Teachers need to teach students how the writer uses each text feature to help the reader to understand or easily extract meaning from the text. For example, bold is used to draw the reader's attention to a specific point. When information is in bold letters, this signals that the reader must pay special attention to it. Similarly, bulleted or number lists highlight important information, but the use of it forms a easier identification to relevant information without having to search the text. In the example on the screen, you notice that the words nuts for the express in the final paragraph is in bold. This will direct students to look above in the paragraph a route taxi as designated course pick up and drop off zones. They are the cheapest and fastest way to get from place to place and always one just around the corner. Just stick out your hand and wait. Having the nuts for the express immediately after this paragraph is important as it allows the reader to recognize that the Nutsford Express is a proper noun and is connected to the paragraph above. The teacher should explain that the use of the bold helps the reader to quickly identify that that is an important idea of, or piece of information in the passage. When we're using headings and subheadings, they are usually found at the top of the pages or paragraphs, and they are bold, large, and or colored. The purpose of using headings and subheadings is to sum up the topic or the paragraph in a word or phrase. They tell the reader the various parts or ideas related to the topic, which will be discussed in the paragraph. It also sectionalizes the text and enables him or her to determine whether the paragraph or the section contains the information for which he is searching. So why headings and subheadings? Headings and subheadings help to organize the structure of the text. They serve as indicators of what each section will be about, and they also enter the main ideas to be covered in that particular section. They are really guides for quick skimming and scanning of the text. In the 
example above, there are several headings and subheadings. The bus network, road taxis and minibuses, metro systems, and ferry services. Under each of those subheadings, the student will know that, for example, the bus network will speak directly about the network of the bus system. The road taxis and minibuses will give some sentences about road taxis and minibuses and so on. That is what the purpose of headings and subheadings are about. They give an idea of what will be covered. So in ferry services, in the last paragraph of the page, there is a small ferry route in Jamaica that isn't really as efficient or as cheap as traveling by bus. But taking the journey by sea is a little more serene and can also be more pleasant too. The ferry generally caters to tourists visiting the country and connects the resorts of Ocherius, Montego Bay, and Negril. From that sub edit and with the paragraph, we recognize that <coughs> the paragraph speaks specifically about the ferry services and it gives the main sentence or main idea and some supporting sentences. So what are the final takeaways for the text features, headings and subheadings and bullet points? As a comprehension strategy, it helps to locate the main ideas in the source document. They help to summarize points. They also assist in determining the type of document. In the examples that were read, you will notice that those are information documents. And so they tell what, for example, the ferry service is about and how it connects the different tourist areas in Jamaica. <coughs> The headings and subheadings and bullet points also help to determine the writer's purpose and again, enhance readability because it directs the reader into knowing exactly where the information will be found. So breaking the document into manageable portions, it helps for sequencing and for logical development and for particular specific focus. And now Ms. Brian will come to us and speak about the current quality assurance structure. Every product needs to be quality assured. And so, City and Gills speaking and listening, because it is being marked internally, is in even greater need to have quality assurance. I'm going to start at the bottom of the quality assurance structure. The importance of the quality assurance process. Um, it is important because we want to ensure that candidates are given the best opportunity to develop the skills which they require. So we want to quality assure the delivery of the qualification to them. It is important for the center because if the center does not pass the quality assurance test, then candidates will not be awarded their certificates and centers will lose their full status and so it is very very important because this is an international exam we want to maintain validity and so we want to make sure that the same content is delivered that the same assessment processes are followed and so that the qualification will maintain acceptability and the product will really not bring any kind of um, mismanagement to the city and bills <laughs> um, brand. Now let's look at the actual persons involved in the quality assurance process. As I said, I want to start at the bottom. 
the center or school staff. The most important person there is the internal verifier. And why? Because this is the person who is the quality assurance manager. And usually this is the head of the English department because this is the person who is able to inspect classes, to see how the qualification is being delivered, to see how students are being assessed, to see if the lesson plans are covering the required unit, and to support assessors when they need help and guidance. And so you can't take people beyond where you are. And so this is why City and Wales requires that internal verifiers are subject competent people. Let's go to the next tier. We have our technical external quality assurer and our external quality assurers. Most of you at some point have had the external quality assurers visit you um, and you have had them write reports. The technical external quality assurer coordinates the work of the external quality assurers. And all of these uh, personnel, they have to be subjects competent, they are selected, their applications are vetted and they are selected by the London team. And so we go up now to the overseas staff. The overseas staff, they, carry, they are called the Caribbean quality team and reports are sent to them. They give us directions about the centers to be visited and so on. But this is it. We answer to the Caribbean quality team. If our reports do not line up with the evidence which we present, then the reports are returned to us and we have to upgrade them. So this is the process. The, the center staff, the external quality assurers, and then the Caribbean quality. There are some key terms which all of us need to be aware of the assessors as well as the internal verifiers or internal quality assurers. Um, here we have this CPD. You would notice that City and Gills is uh, encouraging you to attend this workshop and there's a promise of digital badges as part of evidence of your continuing professional development. Both the external quality assurers and the center team are required to do continuing professional development. And so the C, the candidates, the learners. The candidates are part of the process when an external quality assurer visits a center. We, we look at how they are performing, we interview them, and we triangulate in looking at the whole picture of the readiness of the center. The assessors, we look at the experience of the assessors, their qualifications, etc., and we expect that the internal quality assurers will give them the necessary support more for an inexperienced verifier than a seasoned, an experienced assessor than a seasoned, uh, an inexperienced assessor than a seasoned one. So you are going to support them, head of department. Methods of assessment. Uh, when we begin to look at the types of evidence, this will come out some more. You, you can have actual observation where you look at candidates actually performing a task, whether doing a discussion or doing a presentation. We tend to focus on those because the answers to most of the listening questions come from London. And so we, we tend to focus more on the other two. With regard to evidence, 
this is written as opposed to what we observe. So, you know, um, evidence and re records can overlap. But uh, when we come and observe a student, then, you know, it would be more evidence than records. So we would be looking at students' books, we'd be looking at their assignments, we would be looking at records of um, their speaking and listening activities and records of general records of their work. We tend to ask for the, their tests and so on. Um, with regard to the records that reflect what is going on with what is being offered to them, we tend to be looking at assessment plans so that we can see the progress they are making and you know how this is being uh, recorded and so on. We also look at the actual physical assessment site. You know, is there adequate space? Is there adequate ventilation? All of these are issues which are brought to bear on whether a center is regarded as fit and proper to offer the qualification. So we are going to look in a little more detail now at some of the documents which we would want to examine when we visit a center. So the evidence which we are going to use to write our report which we will send to Caribbean Quality. So we'll be looking at mark books of teachers to see if these marks are marks for items which the candidate should be covering based on the handbook. So if we look at a candidate's handbook, at a candidate's book and notice they are writing stories, we would not regard it as appropriate for City and Wales English because we do not do narrative writing. So we'll be looking for work which reflects the units which are in the handbook, the assessment records, samples of candidates' work, and we want to see that some have been internally verified because that will speak to the quality control that is going on in the school. Lesson plans, live assessment, as mentioned before, because we would want to see the lesson plans reflecting the units which are in the handbook. And similarly, the minutes of department meetings to show that this delivery is being discussed and attention is being paid to what is happening. The sampling plan, this is a very important quality assurance document and I'll be saying a little more about an actual sampling plan to make sure that you understand how to construct it and why it needs to be done in that manner. Now, as I mentioned before, we would want to see documentation which speaks to the competence of the IV and the assessor. So we want to know that this person has a degree or some um, certificate in English language and so on. And a peace procedure in order for candidates to have all their rights protected. We want to know that each center has an appeals procedure which is clear to the candidate. So if the candidate is concerned about subject delivery, about access assessment practices, what is the procedure? Who does the candidate speak to? Does the candidate have to write uh, an appeal to the principal, the vice principal, the candidate needs to know what is to happen. With regard to the organizational chart, the city and wants to know that the personnel necessary exists in the school. So there has to be an examinations coordinator, there has to be an IV and so on. And at the end, with regard to interviews, we interview candidates, we interview center personnel. As I mentioned, we triangulate. So we look at management, we look at people delivering, and we look at the candidates as well um, in order to get the evidence which will reflect to our supervisors that this is the status of the center. 
we also have some guidance material. You look at this sampling plan now and I will explain how a center can construct one and what are the different elements. That the qualification title is Certificate in English Skills, Speaking and Listening. The qualification number and module is 3850-206 and the units covered are 404, 405 and 406. The internal verifier's name is M. Browning, the assessor, Y. Green, M. Campbell, T. Fairweather. The, ass the assessor who was seen first year is M. Campbell. She was seen delivering unit 404 on the 20th of the 9th, 2017. And the IV's response is that students need to work on Assessment criteria 1.2 and 1.4. For unit 405, they need to work on assessment criteria 1.2. Unit 406, they need to work on assessment criteria 1.4 and 1.5. The comments, students need additional practice to meet the criteria indicated. Assessor needs to follow guidelines reassessment criteria. Unit 406, 1.4 and 1.5 and there is a positive comment students listening skills are generally good you will see notice the deep that there are similar details for the other assessors who were seen i have mentioned before that the internal verifier should not merely observe the assessor but should offer help where needed and we can see that help is being offered to Miss Green by Miss Fairweather. So you will notice that Miss Fairweather mastered most of what need to be, needed to be done. So here is a comment, very close correspondence between our evaluations of students' performance. That is the evaluation of the assessor and the external verifier. Students have good mastery of criteria for most units, but need to work on their enunciation and eye contact. And so because Miss Fairweather has done so well and Miss Green needs some help, the internal verifier is going to arrange for Miss Fairweather to do a demonstration class for Miss Green. So you are going to both evaluate and scaffold the assessor. The bottom of the sampling plan as key O, it means observation of live assessment. There are no more different ways of doing internal verification. You might have watched a video of the students or you might have seen them uh, physically you might have looked at what they did in their workbooks. So this here is saying that the internal verifier actually observed a live assessment. So when the external verifier gets this document, there's quite a bit of information about what has been happening in terms of internal verification. To assist the internal verifier and the assessor i am sharing with you today some of the sources of quality assurance information which you can access the document qualification status guidelines international is very important you notice that it is called international so every center across the world which offers english skills 3850 is guided by that document. In the document, you will find the nature of the sanctions for specific risks which are identified in each center. So when you look at the qualification status guidelines, you will be guided as to what risks you should avoid. 
And when we write our reports, we have to quote the particular section of the qualification status guidelines, which relates to what it is that we are pointing out that needs to be corrected. The center guide, as the name implies, gives direction as to how the center should proceed. With regard to the Quality Academy, this is actually an online training site. All of us who are external quality assurers had to go to that site and complete a number of units, modules, and get 100% before we were unleashed on anybody. And there is um, information there. There are modules there for internal verifiers and assessors. And the City and Hills office here can provide you with a link to that center, to that site, so that you can access the relevant module for your training. Now, the Frequently Asked Questions document is a kind of umbrella document which covers everything you need to know. It um, informs you about how you should prepare for a visit. It informs you about how to interpret some of the assessment criteria. Um, it informs you usually about the date of the exams and so on. So it is a very handy document. It was developed based on my experience with the needs of teachers in the field. And so it does, as the name implies, answer the frequently asked questions. I now hand you back to Ms. Lindsay, who will take you into the extended writing component of the exam. For the extended writing, before we go, we would like to talk about the examiner's report for 2022. And there is a very big improvement across the stages in terms of the reading but not so much for the writing. And so we will look now on a voice from the field from Mrs. Stacy Ann Johnson Clark from the Paul Grover High School. She shares with us some strategies that she uses for her extended writing classes. She says that the planning of the extended writing is important. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So the extended writing, the planning stage of it gives a sense of direction. It is a map that guides the writing. So our first point was listing, and she says that you should write down all the possible information that relate to the topic. So for example, our theme for this last exam period was transportation. So in order to complete the extended writing piece, you list all the points that would come to mind when you think of transportation. Points include inadequate number of vehicles, high cost of fuel, frequent gas price increase, the overcrowded vehicles, buses, and taxis, as well as inadequate number of vehicles. These are just a few of the ideas that would come under a listing form that list will be used now to extend into the writing piece. The guided questions in the exam is also important. These guided questions help the student to plan the essay by simply answering the questions and then connecting the responses in an essay form. So they can group the similar ideas in paragraphs so that the essay is very organized. Finally, she gives a cluster strategy, which is very creative. It's a web where the topic is placed in the center, as you can see on your screen, and then the ideas that come to mind, you will just put them in the different parts of the web. And so remember, let the bullet questions, those guided questions that are on the exam papers, let them direct the students to get the content of the essay 
in this way they will have the information to meet the prescribed work limit and that is very important and we thank Mrs. Stacy and John Clark for her input in some of the strategies. So remember in a class when we're having the students extend their writing we can do brainstorming we can do the KWL strategy we can do the webbing as Mrs. John Clark spoke about which webbing is the same as clustering and then we can use a theme and word list for search. All of these will enable the students to pull ideas related to the topic and then it's just a matter of connecting the ideas for the essay. So let's look at a stage two sample. The students are asked to write a letter of application for a job at a television station. So pulling the idea of an application, what job would you like to apply for? Why would you like to do the job? And what skills would you need if you get that job? So those three headings, those three questions should be able to give the students three paragraphs for the extended writing piece. As the example suggests, use the questions, answer the questions. It is very important for students to recognize that they already know the extended writing if they can answer the sample questions. That is why the sample questions are on the exam paper so that students will be able to pull the information to complete the, the writing piece. It's not a matter of looking for the information outside of the text. The questions are there to guide them. The information is already there. Also importantly, the examination report spoke about the subject and verb agreement and end punctuation. It is vitally important that teachers bring students into focus to recognize subject and verb agreement as well as the proper punctuation marks for the ending of sentences. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure serving you and we want to make sure that you are taken care of on all counts. And so you will notice that on screen we have a list of available resources. We want you to access them and they are available from the Caribbean Rep Office from their simple access platform. So please make sure to avail yourself of those resources so you can give your students the best opportunity to do well in their exams. Thank you so much teachers for sticking and staying with us as we now come to the end of our English Skills 3850 workshop for 2022. Now remember, please complete the survey. We want to hear from you as we aim to serve you better. And here to also remind you that you'll be getting a digital badge which will aid in validating your continued professional development. We would have received your email addresses once you've registered via the link and it is to that email that we'll be sending your digital badge. We thank you so much for serving the nation's children and for your continued support of City and Gills. See you next year.